Okay, so the the various brain waves, uh, which is really the indication of of where we are in the actual sleep cycle itself, uh, is like I mentioned, uh, the first level is this waking beta. This is when you're doing most of your work and you're alert and on um, task, if you will. And the alpha is even more, as you can tell, is even more of a, um, a high, heavy activity. But as we begin to move toward more and more uh, quiet and ultimately sleepiness, we move from that in REM, uh, so we go one, wakefulness, uh, whoops, wake. wakefulness to um, the uh, so alpha waves etc then we go in rem one and you see the uh, activity that, that happens in in rem one uh, we've got the hypnagogic uh, I gotta make sure I'm spelling this right hypnagogic um, images, if you will, that are part of NREM 1. And then we move to NREM 2. And like I mentioned previously, is we see these sleep spindles. Um, and that is partly what characterizes um, this NREM 2 sleep. And what you'll notice is, uh, right here when you're looking at NREM2, you see these areas of the EEG where they're the sleep spindles that um, characterize NREM2. Uh, and uh, about 20 minutes uh, of NREM2 uh, is really these bursts of, of activity that occur here that are part of the sleep spindles and they're part of NREM uh, 2. And then we move to NREM uh, 3, which uh, 4, and these are all prior to uh, REM sleep itself, but NREM 3 is a slow wave. Whoops, let me put in NREM 3. And this is uh, slow waves, slow uh, uh, wave sleep. Um, and this slow wave sleep, and you can see it down here in NREM 3, and you have these long uh, amplitude waves that indicate the changes that go on. This is that place where oftentimes uh, kids who have trouble wetting the bed, this is when uh, this occurs. It's very similar to kind of near paralysis. It's really hard to wake somebody up out of this um, this uh, uh, level of sleep, essentially. Um, when you enter basically from there, and it's about an hour after you first fall asleep, is that you fall into the most intriguing sleep, and that is really REM sleep. And REM sleep is, as the name suggests, is rapid eye movement. Uh, the electrodes that we showed you um, is uh, uh, detect the movement of the eyes during this time. Um, it's usually the time that uh, you're experiencing your dream state. And uh, the motor cortex is very active, uh, but essentially, uh, uh, the brain stem blocks its messages. So uh, the motor cortex is busy, but the brain stem, because remember the activity of the motor cortex is sending signals down the spinal cord for activity, but the brain stem blocks it. And so you, um, your, your mind is very busy. Actually, some of the, the breakthrough sometimes ends up being um, a part of what we see in sleepwalking. But you, really, essentially, uh, you're in a state of paralysis at this point. Now, not technical paralysis. You can be awakened and pulled out of it. But um, it is kind of a state of paralysis where you're not easily awakened at this point in time. Um, 
so essentially what you have is uh, what we oftentimes refer to as paradoxical sleep because the um, paradoxical sleep Um, because the body itself is internally aroused, the body is aroused with uh, waking activity, but yet uh, asleep, asleep and externally calm, not moving. And, and that's how it's so paradoxical. There's a lot of activity going on, but we don't see any evidence of it whatsoever. Now, as we continue through the process, um, and, and like I said, uh, you can follow the, the brain waves and sleep stages by the NREM, which is, in a sense, waking. NREM is the non-REM sleep. Um, and then and then you go into REM sleep and then uh, you you come back out of it again. The thing to keep in mind here is that the, the sleep cycle itself um, repeats itself uh, every 90 minutes approximately. And so it cycles through um, every 90 minutes. So if you do the math uh, that and ultimately, we need REM sleep. It's part of what uh, uh, refreshes us, uh, re allows the brain to recuperate, and so forth. But essentially, uh, we have spent uh, 20 to 25 percent of uh, the night's sleep uh, in REM sleep in REM sleep, and, and we need it. We, that REM sleep is quite critical. If you shorten your sleep time, let's just say that you sleep for four hours. You can do the math. Uh, basically, you have two sleep cycles in four hours, approximately, uh, because it, uh, two would be, a, 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 whoops, would be an hour and a half, um, and so it's about three hours, and if you figure in um, getting to sleep and waking up again, uh, that's part of it. That's not nearly enough. Uh, we need all of the time that we spend in these sleep cycles. Uh, if you do eight hours of sleep, which I know is probably pretty generous, essentially you've got four sleep cycles, almost four, even five, uh, when you do eight hours, it's, it's um, uh, 480 minutes, essentially, and 90 minutes it repeats. Um, you've got about five sleep cycles that you get in, in uh, your typical about eight hours of sleep. Sleep cycles. And essentially, in a lot of ways, that's exactly why you feel as rested as you do, because you're able to cycle through each one of these. Interestingly enough, when you when you uh, uh, kind of pop up um, into wakefulness or semi-wakefulness, uh, it's usually a time when um, you might uh, recognize that you need to hit the, the john or um, Whatever it is, this is also the time sometimes when uh, you'll roll over um, and wake up and look at your clock. These are, these are kind of the peak points in time when you come up out of REM sleep into NREM again. And you see the, the cycles themselves in your book where you look at the stages in a typical night's sleep and what it is for young adults versus what it is for older adults. And you see uh, how often they kind of jump up into wakefulness and then back down into uh, REM sleep itself. So um, the, the NREM, one, two, and three, is part of what is, drops you farther and farther down into deep, deep sleep. But then as you're coming back out, you hit REM sleep on the way out. So essentially, you move down this way and then uh, come back out again, and then you drop again, and each time that you do is a sleep cycle. And REM is up here, 
and then NREM down here takes you down into the deepest sleep, um, and then you cycle back up again through REM and then into wakefulness again. So um, that that really is a little deceiving when you're reading it. When you're looking at it, you got to understand that NREM is REM sleep is up here um, as you're falling asleep and then going into the deepest sleep and then coming back out again and REM is up 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 in this area up here. So uh, keep in mind that. Uh, that's when all the dreaming occurs. Sometimes you'll wake up and, and realize that you were dreaming and uh, be able to take a look at it or remember it. Some people actually keep a, what they call a sleep journal. I've had people before, even in counseling, do that. And th they wake up and they record their, their dreams in the effort to try to see if there's uh, any uh, pattern to their dreams. Sometimes there is. Uh, obviously sometimes there's not.